Hiya, I haven't recorded anything for a while. Um, this video is going to be about some pigments, some uh, colour pigments for water based stains. They come in, this is the pack, it's <laughs> Brusho, uh, Brusho pigments, it comes in a 12 pack, you can get them singular as well. Uh, and they come in these little uh, little tubs. These uh, 15 gram tubs, but you don't need a lot. Uh, they, uh, these will last a while, depending on the strength of the pigment that you want. Uh, the colour, should I say, the strength of the colour. I've been experimenting so far with two colours. I've experimented with emerald green and ultramarine. What I'm going to be doing is, uh, next I'm going to be experimenting with the red to see just how little pigment you actually need. To make uh, to make the stain as strong as you want it to be, you can obviously add more if you want or less if you want. Especially like if you're mixing colours, if you uh, if you want to mix two different colours to make a different shade or different, uh, you know what I mean, mixture. You might want to put half as much of each in the pot to mix with the water. You do put the pigment in second, so you put the water in the pot first and then you drop the pigment in which is an advantage, big advantage, because if you're testing colours you don't really want to be putting your colours in first, putting the water in it's not the colour you want, chuck it away and start again because that's a lot of wastage I've changed my mind, I'm going to go with orange it does look orange as well I out some of these tubs, like the green uh, which one was it? it was this one here, emerald green That's the colour, there it is. But when it's mixed, it does turn green. Uh, whereas this one, obviously, it's like a orange. Here. These are uh, from Wilco's Wil or Wilkinson's. The fifty pence each, all the way when I bought them, and I bought a load of them, and they're ideal because you can store them, obviously, side to side. It's got a nice wide neck as well. They're supposed to be spice pots, so then you can dip your material in there to get the colour and you're not farting about with a little opening or a squeegee um, so what I'm going to do is that flat there, the flat edge, right at the top of that curve once the water's in is approximately 180 millilitres so I'll pour the water in first and I'm going to do it a very scientific way I've got a teaspoon and what you want to do is, you want to be doing this over a nice bit of shiny paper with very low friction. And what I'm doing is, pouring a, pouring a bit on the teaspoon. It does clump together it looks like, so I need to mix this to get there. Uh, I didn't have this problem with the other ones. Just mix it up a little bit. Look at me. Messy. This is what I mean. I'll just scrape it and scrape it back to level it off. So you've got a level amount. And you just tip, dump it in. And stir it. Now because it's powder, you do obviously get a powder build up on the top of the surface. It's not mixing any pigments really. It does like to float. And this looks very red. It's like the orange side of red, I suppose. What you might want to do is you might want to mix this up first but don't mix it up and then use it straight away because there are slight granules. You do get a little bit of powder around the edge as well and around here so it's worth doing that first and you put the lid on or what I've been doing. This is my method. Make sure it's nice and tight. 
I'll give it a shake. And that takes care of any powder residue that's at the top. Do you know what I mean? Round the rim. And you just leave it for the bubbles to dissipate. Now the bubbles are nicely dissipated. If you've got very little patience, you can use a heat gun as well <laughs> on a low setting just to waft on the inside and it pops the bubbles quicker. You just tip the excess what spilt off the paper, uh, spilt onto the paper, back into the tub. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a glove for stain lights to stain. If it doesn't stain your fingers, then there's something wrong. You need to send the stuff back. So get one of these. I like, I like using these as opposed to paper towel because you know what paper towel uh, goes like when it gets wet. It just goes all, it just all crumbles and falls to bits. Whereas these are uh, these Spontex, what I picked up from Tesco's or J cloths. Just dip it in. I'm using MDF because it's got an even colour. It's got an even colour balance around it as opposed to pine or any other woods and they've got details and grain. And this is not to see what it does with the grain but to see what power you need. That looks nice and orange but is it weak? This is the thing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to not show you the process again because I've already done it once. But I'm going to do the same with the paper and put another level teaspoon in it, mix it up, pop the bubbles and then come back to you. Right, this is the second lot, second level teaspoon. That, sound, that looks darker. I'm going to give that a blast with the air gun to dry it off quicker. So obviously when it's wetter it's going to be darker. So I've got the air gun but obviously there's powder there so you've got to be keep, keep it out of the way otherwise it's going to blow all your pigment up over the place. two half teaspoons. Now I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep on going round until the darkness doesn't look like it's changing, doesn't get in, uh, isn't getting darker. Right, as a comparison you can see that's one level teaspoon, two, three, four level teaspoons. <coughs> Excuse me. As you can see that's feet weak, just barely passable. That one's nice at three. I wanted to keep a little bit of orange left, you can see here I've still got about a quarter, a quarter of a tub in there. I want to keep uh, keep some because obviously I'll, I'll, I might want to mix colours in the future. If you want darker you can always just uh, just do a second coat as you can see there the overlap lines are, uh, are much darker. There's not much overlap uh, darkness change of colour between the three and the four with the overlap. So maybe three and four is borderline just about perfect for 180 millilitres of water. For the greens, that's emerald green from Brusho. Uh, that is green from 
crimson guitar stains what I got before Christmas that's ultramarine blue and then that's royal blue royal blue from crimson uh, the crimson comes in a liquid concentrate bottle or you can buy it already pre-mixed uh, with the concentrates one full bottle which is 20, uh, 12 millilitres uh, mixes about right for 180 mil of uh, water so as you can see with, uh, with the concentrate bottles from crimson makes 180 mil approximately half of one of these which is 15 mil makes 180 mil uh, these 18 pound for 12 so you can uh, so you can work that out how cheap these actually are as, uh, but that is obviously on MDF what I've done is I've got a lime bowl that I'm going to show you next with the emerald green and the ultramarine on it right I'll try to keep the camera as steady as I can that's one coat of emerald green and then that's um, sorry two coats of emerald green and that's using it's still a little bit damp as you can see it's uh, it's a bit dark on that edge but uh, that's that's seep through from the inside because I used it, uh, I went a little bit too wet on the inside and it seeped through to the outside but that's using two level teaspoons in 180 millilitres of water and that's the green that gives you on lime and that's the natural colour <laughs> That's the natural. That's the natural colour there. Um, that's the ultramarine blue. And also, what I've done is I've done an overlap. That's not my skills. To uh, my skills are a little bit not that fantastic, to be honest. Blending colours together. I'm sure you'll be able to do a better job than that. But that gives you an idea. That's just one coat of the ultramarine blue. And that's two coats of the emerald green but to be honest the one coat the difference between the one coat and the two coats wasn't that vast uh, it darkened darkened it up a little bit but uh, it's not massive at all right so there you go you can see how cheap they are that's 180 millilitres of water with you could get away with about two and a quarter uh, level teaspoons in 180 millilitres of water and have a nice dye-based stain. Uh, dye-based pigmented stain. Even at that, with four, um, four level teaspoons, I've still got some spare. So I'm sure if you've got a grass jar that gives you 500 millilitres, you dump a full tub of these in 500 millilitres it will give you a nice uh, nice consistency but don't forget though that the darker colours do need to take less the because of the bowl that I showed you the green and the blue especially the blue uh, the blue and it took two half tablespoons and that's already very dark so you don't need a lot of that at all so you'd really need to experiment yourself to get the actual consistency that you want but as you can see it's very cheap because £18 for 12 that's just over a pound for a tub and you could say including buying the bottle you could get 500 millilitres of uh, pigment um, dye, dye based pigment stain there for less than £2 so there you go I just thought I'd add I'm not being paid at all by Vico Marks or Art Van Gogh um, they don't even know I'm doing this uh, doing this for uh, for YouTube. All this is for is to help you. All right, take it easy. Have some uh, good times in the shed or the workshop, and have some creative times. That sounds daft, doesn't it? <laughs> Just in addition to the video, it's the following day. I made a claim that uh, that. One of these pots would be good for 500 millilitres of water. Well, I haven't got a 500 millilitre pot, but I have got a one litre. 
So what I've done is I've used a measuring jug, there's exactly 500 millilitres of water in here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, uh, one of the other colours, uh, I had it in my hand a second ago. I've just put it somewhere. Leaf green, where have I just put it? Shall I start again? Scarlet, yellow, lemon, leaf green, here we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump all of this pigment Looks orange don't it, but, uh, but it's got leaf green on the side So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump all of this pigment in there I say all of it, I've just got a little bit of spillage around the outside Just on my hand It's very, very early in the morning. Very sorry. It's very early in the morning. I've had a very long night shift. So I have spilt a little bit, but you could say that is like virtually nothing. It's just on the hand and a little bit on the side there. But that's all empty. It's all in there. I'm going to stick the lid on. Give it a damn good shake. That's tight. The Cap is down. This is the leaf green. That pigment there is on the outside. Right. I'm going to come back to see where the bubbles have gone. So I forgot about that. There's going to be a mad amount of bubbles in there. More head than a pint. A pint of beer. Okay, I'm still in the shed. Got a bowl. Um, was a lot deeper, but it was warped to hell, and it was uh, it was split at the top as well. So I parted it off, chewed it all up, smoothed it off. This is. Um, Sanded up to 240 grit, so it's not extremely high, but it's high enough for this experiment. So I've got the leaf green, I've got a J cloth or Spontex, whatever it's called, and I'll just smudge it on. This is actually looking a lot better than what it did do on the MDF. One of your quick tip, whenever you're putting water based stains on wood, it warps the wood a lot. So don't just do the outside and leave the inside bare. If you don't want to stain the inside, then get some clear water and rub the inside with clear water, uh, clear water instead of with stain. And then that way you've got liquid on both sides and it evaporates uh, at the same rate. You'll still get a tiny little bit of warping, but trust me, through experience I know it. If you just stain one side and leave the in, uh, if you just stain the outside and leave the inside dry, it will go severely out of warp, uh, out of uh, out of kilter. And that's actually looking quite nice. Ha hoo! That's free wood as well. Some tree surgeons were chopping some trees down and I could hear a chainsaw from a mile away. I drove work to where they were so I says to them, do you mind if I just take some of that? And they said, take as much as you want. Because the more I took, the less they had to take away. <laughs> so I filled my car up. More or less bottomed out the car. I did a load of, uh, load of wet turning. 
this is one of them and that's looking really nice I like that colour that is going to lighten up a little bit though because that's still dark but what I might do is so I've got the other green the emerald green while that's still wet I'm going to get another piece of cloth That's annoyed me. It shouldn't, shouldn't be in so much of a rush. Well, I've got reason. And that's my folks. And the last bit, time is really getting on. It's now ten past eight in the morning. I'm going to stick some oil just to see it pop wait for a see it pop I've had, I've had the uh, heat gun on it a little bit as well to dry it off a little bit quicker this is bare wood, there's no sealer so it's soaking in the good one see what I mean, it's just going dry so it's going to take quite a few coats of oil the green isn't coming off The first coats of oil I always put it on with a sponge because putting it on with a paper towel it's a waste of time you'd be spending all day <laughs> an old day but hours trying to put the first coat of oil on bare wood with a paper towel it just soaks it straight in ends up drying the paper towel so quick it turns to powder Very nice. Just shows you don't it, just a bit of free work, a bit of experimentation. See how that comes out. Tomorrow I'll sand it up. What I tend to do is I don't actually sand. A lot of people knock back with uh, with wire wool or sandpaper. But what I do is I soak it through. Leave it for about ten minutes just to soak uh, soak in a little bit more. I uh, just get a paper towel. Just wipe off the excess, and then the following uh, following day might be very very slight airborne particles of dust in the air if you haven't got a very good dust filtration which I haven't so uh, what I'll do is I'll just get some paper towel put it on a fairly high speed and just with a paper towel just uh, just go around and that knocks off any uh, that denibs does a good job of denibbing the oil and put another coat of oil on and I keep on putting oil on until it stops soaking in but to be honest this is very thin, it's soft wood so I've got no dry patches there so I think I might be able to actually get away with just the one coat but 
I'm more than likely to put another coat on tomorrow. Leave it for about 10 minutes, wipe off the excess, go to bed. <laughs> and then uh, the following day, put some wax on it. And what I'll do is, obviously I want to get this video uploaded. So the video is out of the way and it's up there. And then uh, the finished article, I'll uh, take a few photos and see if I can stick them in the comments somehow. So I'm going to leave that for 10 minutes, wipe off the excess, get in the house, edit video. Joy of joys. So hopefully that's been of help. Uh, a bit of help, been of any help to you. Take it easy.